Thank you, John and Kim. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday in Lent, March 20th, 2022. Our radio broadcast and altar flowers are given today to the glory of God and in honor of her husband's birthday on March 23rd by Alice Jensen. Thank you, Alice, and congratulations to Lloyd Jensen, who will be turning 92 years old on Wednesday. We wish you a happy birthday and a wonderful year, Lloyd. We want to hold in prayer the family of Bruce Beck, who died on Wednesday in Wisconsin Rapids. Bruce was the brother of Elaine and Dick Nelson and uncle to John and Carrie Langcor. We extend our deepest sympathies to the Beck family. We wanted to provide hospitalization updates on two Bethany members. Dorothy Erickson had heart valve surgery up in Marquette on Monday, and she is recovering at home as of Thursday night. And John Pinar had two additional surgeries this past Thursday. He is expecting to be released from UP Health in Marquette today, and he will be glad to get home again. Please keep Dorothy and Ken and John and Lois in your prayers as they continue to recover. Work has begun on our two sanctuary entrance areas that have needed repair due to water damage. As those of you at worship found out this morning, our entrances to the narthex have been affected. The northeast corner is closed, and the southeast is open, but only through the elevator entrance. Uh, the steps leading up to the double doors are the best way to enter if you can maneuver all those steps. And you can also come through the circle drive entrance and then up uh, up the hallway and then through the sacristy if you'd like and come in in this direction. In fact, the Sunday schoolers should leave in that direction, Brooke, this morning. Lots of choices, along with a bit of inconvenience. Uh, we do hope to have everything restored by Palm Sunday, so thank you for your understanding and your patience. Last week, I spoke in my sermon about supporting those displaced by the war in Ukraine through giving to Lutheran Disaster Response, and I once again invite you to make a donation to Bethany. We'll send your uh, uh, donations for the people of Ukraine onto the larger church, LDR, which then partners with other organizations. We've already collected over $1,000, and your generosity is truly appreciated. 
John and I are also inviting anyone interested to join us for a Ukrainian takeout feast on Monday, March 28th. A little restaurant in Powers, the Wilson Creek Cafe, is offering traditional food that day. John and I will pick up the orders, and those wanting to gather will be able to do so at about 5.30 p.m. in the Circle Drive area. You can also pick up your orders and take them home if you'd like. We do ask that orders be placed in the church office by Wednesday. Wilson Creek Cafe is making cabbage rolls, pierogies, and borscht, and proceeds from the event will go to World Central Kitchen to help feed Ukrainian refugees. Please check out the other announcements in your bulletin today. There are notices relative to free store needs, the soups being offered on Wednesday, and a reminder about midweek Lenten services. And just a reminder for families with fifth graders and any older uh, that there will be First Communion instruction in the Circle Drive Chapel after worship this morning. We're not expecting it to last too long. Finally, thank you members and guests who are joining us for in-person worship today. Thank you to radio listeners for being with us on either AM 600 or FM 93.5. And thank you to viewers who are joining us on Facebook Live or later on our YouTube channel. We appreciate those who are helping out with today's worship service, John Beck and Kim Beck, our musicians, Tyra Beck, who is running our live stream, and Marcy Caven, who is serving as our assisting minister. My name is Pastor Terry Frankenstein, and we welcome you. Let us begin with our confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you're comfortable. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Our gathering song is, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer.
Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Eternal God, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it, and bring your saving love to fruition in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join me as we read Psalm 63 responsively. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your steadfast love is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My spirit is content as with the richest of foods, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My whole being clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. 
A reading from 1 Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us that we might not desire evil as they did, to not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite our children to come forward. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? What have I got here? A light bulb. So what would happen if I dropped this? What would happen? It would break. It would break into lots and lots of pieces, wouldn't it? It would be a mess. Would it be a disaster, the worst thing that ever happened? No, no, it wouldn't, because I would just send John over to TNT Hardware. He'd go to Kelly O'Connell, and he'd get another package of these. But you know what? It wasn't always this way. Back when Thomas Edison was working on perfecting the light bulb, can you guess how long it would take? him along with a couple of people to make one light bulb? Guess how long? Yes. A, a year? That's a little long. They were, they were well underway, but they just were going to make one light bulb? Yes. Go ahead. A month? Five days. Actually, it was 24 hours, but that's a long time when you've got a whole group of people working on a single light bulb, right? Because 24 hours is like two really long days or maybe three eight-hour days. So one day they had the light bulb all set. 24 hours worth of work for three or four people. And they needed it to go upstairs in order for them to actually test it. So Thomas Edison gave the light bulb to a young boy. And that young boy carefully held the light bulb in his hand, and he went up, step by step by step, to the top. And what do you think happened when he got to the top? He dropped it. It broke. Yes, no, he didn't chuck it, but he did, he did drop it, and it broke. So they were back to square one. They had to work another 24 hours to make a single light bulb. So they were done. They were ready to test it again. And what do you think Thomas Edison did with that light bulb? Can you guess, Emma? Do you think he did it himself? He took it upstairs himself? What do you think? What do you think? 
you thought, yeah, I think maybe a grown-up took it up this time. Well, would it surprise you if I told you that Thomas Edison gave it to the same young boy to take up the steps? The young boy was given a second chance, wasn't he? And second chances are pretty good things. It showed that he still had faith in the young boy. So today, after you guys leave, we're going to hear a gospel reading, and we're going to hear about a fig tree that isn't producing any fruit at all. For three years, that tree, the tree was out there, and it didn't even produce one fig. So what do you think the landowner wanted to do with that fig tree? What? Go ahead. Cut it down, pull it up, get rid of that thing. It's not, no fruit at all. But then there was a caretaker at the vineyard, and what did the caretaker say? Go ahead. Give it another chance. Yep, if I dig around in it and loosen up the soil and put some fertilizer on it, maybe it will grow fruit. Maybe it'll grow fruit next year. If not, then you can get rid of it. But let it go for one more year. Give it a second chance. So second chances are a good thing. God gives us a lot of second chances because you know what? We mess up all the time, and we need those second chances, don't we? All right. Hold our hand. Bow our heads. Let's pray. Dear God, even though we don't always produce good fruit either, we thank you for working with us and giving us second chances and always help us to produce the kind of fruit that you want. Amen. All right. Off to Sunday school. You're going to go that direction, but stop and get a dum-dum if you would like. Everybody get one? Oh, decisions, decisions. Huh? Okay. Very good. Please uh, stand as you're comfortable and let us together speak the uh, Lenten sentence. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I bring you grace and peace and mercy from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning, we meet a Jesus who will make us uncomfortable, who will remind us that one day we will be judged, that we all need to repent. 
In our gospel reading, Jesus is continuing his journey to Jerusalem with all kinds of folks following along as he makes his way. The people listening to him are interested. They're curious. Some of them are committed to Jesus' ministry and his goals, some not. He's been busy teaching them. And in the sections before today's gospel reading, Jesus has been telling parables about money and foolishness and always being prepared. As is pretty typical, people aren't getting the points being made. Jesus has just finished criticizing those in the crowd, calling them hypocrites, basically saying, you guys don't get it. You're clueless about the signs of the times. Naturally, some of Jesus' listeners take exception to the criticism and they challenge him, mentioning an actual sign of the times. Recently, Pilate had massacred Galileans who had traveled to Jerusalem to worship. Those in the crowd are asking, what do you think about this, Jesus? The people want to know. Why did this group of Galileans die at the hands of a violent tyrant? Was it punishment for wrongs that the Galileans had committed? Was it their fault? Did they deserve what happened? They must have done something wrong. Jesus' response certainly isn't what they expect. He explains, the men who were martyred while carrying out their religious duties committed offenses that were no worse than the offenses of those who were not caught worshiping at that specific moment. Jesus concludes with a warning that if the listeners don't repent, if they don't turn their lives around, they too will perish. Then Jesus goes on to talk about another recent headline when 18 people perished as the Tower of Siloam fell, a terrible accident. Jesus says the same thing. Those who died had offenses that were no worse than anyone else who may have been near the tower that day. Those who died were simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he follows with the same warning, repent or perish. It's believed true in Jesus' time and maybe our own to some extent that we suffer and are punished for our sins. Karma, cause and effect, what goes around comes around. Jesus is saying no, there's no connection. He's telling us that when random bad things happen, it is through no fault of our own. And that's not always easy to believe. Like when something relatively minor goes wrong and we wonder, what did I do to deserve that? Or when something much more heart-wrenching occurs and we again wonder, what did I do to deserve that? Deep down, we have this suspicion that we suffer or others suffer because of the bad we've done. It's the season of Lent, a time for looking inward, and we might want to pause and consider our thoughts about those suffering in our world. Have you ever found yourself thinking, the poor are the poor because of what they've done? The sick are sick because it's their own fault. The imprisoned are locked away because of their flaws and defects and sins. Are we quick to blame victims? Do our smug attitudes keep us from looking at a deeper truth? So often we forget to factor in circumstances like growing up in families with addictive behaviors, domestic violence, and lack of educational opportunities. We make some pretty unfair assumptions. On the other hand, some of us have a tendency to think along the flip side, the reverse, especially those of us who have been blessed financially, who have perfect health, who haven't been caught in some sinful action. Self-importance, 
self-righteous qualities leading us to believe that all is well because we are good. We are without offense. We needn't feel small, small like those who are down on their luck through their own faults, their sins and offenses. When we're good and righteous, we are free from suffering. In today's gospel reading, Jesus is using these two local tragedies which the crowd is assuming indicate divine judgment as an opportunity to speak about a difficult subject, actual judgment. The so-called good are not immune to tragedy and suffering, and if they don't repent, if we don't turn our lives around, we will perish. Repent and Repentance are words that sometimes bring to mind fire and brimstone revival preachers thundering on and on about the tortured fate of the unsaved, with people rushing to the altar to be saved. Other times we think of repentance in a much toned down way, as simply saying, I'm sorry to God or to those around us. But repentance isn't about fear. And it isn't a momentary instance of remorse and forgiveness. Repentance is a journey of transformation, where we're enlightened, where we deepen our union with God and others. It's about envisioning the world as it might be, where there's no longer hate or injustice or violence. Repentance is about hope, not fear. And hope is not about wishing that things could be the way they used to be, returning to a simpler time. That's nostalgia. Repentance asks us to go further and deeper into the world as it is now. God is already with us in the middle of whatever path we're on, and repentance helps us see where God already is by removing our blinders so that we can be called into the work the world. This morning, the parable of the fig tree reinforces Jesus' message of judgment. Years ago, the landowner planted a fig tree in his vineyard, and he now figures it's time to gather fruit from it. But alas, the tree is barren. As a good steward of his land and crops, the landowner realizes there are some problems. The tree is worthless because it's been barren three years in a row, and it's taking up space that could otherwise be productive. It's time to cut it down, be done with it. But the caretaker, he pleads for patience. Give it another year, and in that time, he'll loosen the soil around the fig tree and add fertilizer. And then maybe, just maybe, it will produce fruit in a year. And that will be good, a good reason to give the tree one more chance. If it doesn't produce figs in the one-year grace period, then it could be cut down. The message for us, God is patient. God is giving Jesus hearers and giving us time for repentance. But there is a limit to patience. God's grace is not to be understood as casual indulgence. As disciples of Christ, God gives us the opportunity for daily repentance and renewal. Each day is a day of grace. And when we repent, we can bear the fruits of repentance, shaped by the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Peace and patience, kindness, generosity, self-control. There are endless possibilities, a limitless range of actions that we can take in our time and in our places. We are invited into the headlines of our day to commit to being focused on our gifts and the good work before us. We still have time to blossom and bear fruit, yet we must always keep in mind that God holds us accountable. Judgment lies ahead. But we thank God for the gift of Jesus Christ because it is through him, through the cross and the resurrection, that we have the promise of second chances.
Amen. Our hymn of the day is, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. As you're comfortable, please stand and let us join together in professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed or Baptismal Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church around the world in all its forms, for pastors, deacons, bishops, chaplains, and mission developers, for church councils, committee chairs, and all lay ministry leaders for congregations that contemplate difficult decisions about the future of their ministry. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the health of this planet and the well-being of its creatures, for lands impacted by droughts and at risk of wildfires, for fig trees and vineyards that produce fruit for our nourishment and delight, for animal habitats threatened by climate change. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those called into positions of civic responsibility, for judges, attorneys, and court administrators tasked with uncovering truth and delivering justice, for activists and community leaders who cast a vision of a more compassionate and equitable society. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. For those who call upon you for mercy, 
for all who live in poverty and experience hunger, for any who feel tested beyond their strength, for those who are hospitalized or near death, and for all in need of healing, especially John Pienaar, Dorothy Erickson, Edward Butchart, Sharon Willett, Tony West, Judy Pepin, Don Hopkins, Jean Peterson, Bob Pulowski, Nina Johnson, Faith Landcor, Alfred Gossen, Kent Anderson, and those we name before you now either aloud or in this moment of silence. Merciful God, receive our prayer for the advocacy efforts of this congregation, for those whose faith leads them to speak difficult truths and engage in difficult conversations with policymakers, for those who promote mercy over vengeance or retaliation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for all those suffering or afraid, that you will be close to them and protect them. We pray for world leaders, for compassion, strength, and wisdom to guide their choices. We pray for the world that in this moment of crisis, we may reach out in solidarity to our brothers and sisters in need. May we walk in your ways so that peace and justice become a reality for the people of Ukraine and for all the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those whose earthly journeys have ended, we give thanks. With all the saints, especially Bruce Beck, we praise you for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Merciful God, accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the sign of peace with one another.
Will you please stand as together we say our offertory response? Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all. Unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. You may be seated. Holy Communion is served at the front of the sanctuary. We have wafers in paper cups and in the trays. You'll find wine on the outer edges and grape juice in the center. Uh, Rodney will be releasing those uh, as we go along. So come to the table. Here is food and drink for your journey. Take and be filled.
you're comfortable, please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. And receive this blessing. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Our sending song is Restore in Us, O God. Thank you.